Hello there, Libro. Welcome to your June forecast. It's great to see you again, and this is an exciting month for every sign because it's a perfect time of year right now to not only check in on your existing goals, but to make new ones. This is almost like New Year's when we do the forecast, looking at all of the opportunities ahead. And just like that forecast, I really want to help you maximize what you can this month and hopefully set you on the right trajectory for the rest of this year. All right, before we get started, I'd like to quickly mention that this can be used for your sun, your rising, as well as your moon sign. And if there's someone in your life that you care about, you can also watch it on their behalf. Now, if you don't happen to know all three of these parts of your chart, just stick with the sign that you were born under and you'll get all of the guidance that you need by doing that. To all of my returning viewers and supporters, I'd just like to say thank you so much and welcome back. If you're brand new, I'd like to say a nice hearty welcome. My name is Nicholas Ashbaugh and every month I show up and do a really nice deep dive into everything that's coming through for this month. I start with channeled information. That's using my intuition alone. Then I follow that up with a Celtic cross that shows all of the main energies that need to come through. Whatever wants to come through will, but then I made sure that I hit major areas by expanding the forecast to include health, wealth, love, and destiny. And at the very end, I do a wrap up where I review what we talked about and leave you with a closing word. If you enjoy what I do and you enjoy the way that I presented it, please stick around until that ending point because I will also give you some information on how you can support the channel. That runs the whole gamut from um, liking and subscribing to joining me on social media. And for those of you that are interested in going a little deeper, you can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one or if you'd like to just contribute to the channel, I'll tell you how you can become a patron and maybe do either a one-time or continuing donation. So um, I'll, I'll definitely go into that later, but I know that you're here for the guidance for this month. So without any additional delays, let's get into your channeled message for the month of June. Each and every month, I begin the channeled information or message by meditating. And when I do that, that's when I tap into uh, imagery, sounds, or feelings. This month, as I did that for you, I saw an archway and I focused on the top stone, which is called the keystone. And uh, I had to kind of look up later what this meant or how it kind of functioned. But apparently the keystone is sort of what keeps the integrity of the arch uh, together. And oftentimes it's that final piece that is put in. And so it seemed appropriate that it would come through for this month because for you, you are perhaps at a point in your life, in your relationship or in a project or process where you've worked really hard and you see all of these sort of aggregate pieces taking form, but it feels like it isn't quite finished or you're still kind of pushing to get to that finish line. And this month, I feel like you're going to have a little bit more work to do uh, to that effort, but it is the, I would say, most pivotal piece. And also it should be something that you don't rush. You should take your time because just like a keystone, a lot of times there's a decorative element, maybe a, a gargoyle or a flourish or f some sort of a plaque or whatever, but typically that's a very um, visible piece. And with respect to the structure, it's a pivotal piece. So to pull it in a different sort of metaphor here, this would be like a sprint and or a long distance run. You put in all of the energy, you don't give up in those last few moments, this is the month where you really want to pour your heart, your soul, your integrity into everything that you do, whether it's work, a relationship, a project, or even yourself if you're doing some sort of personal improvement. This is where you really can shine and that's very, very exciting. So you have to believe in yourself and you have to have that vision and also see how everything is now finally coming into shape. Another way to look at the keystone metaphor for you is to focus on structuring your time, your days for that matter, and to, to have sort of a consistency about everything that you're doing. So whatever you're trying to create or have an effect on in the world, it's not so much about like how you do in each day. It's that over time you start to see improvement and with continued returns and that consistent approach day after day or week after week, you just start to feel better, you start to integrate, you start to really take on the energy of completion, of strength, of visibility, and of power. All of those things that I would associate with the Keystone. Again, don't be afraid to stand out this month. That is the, the thing that you see the most or first often when you look at something. So this is a month to be bold, to finish things up, and to be consistent. 
Let's go ahead now and move along to see what the Celtic Cross has to say for this month. A reminder that at this point I like to remain quiet. Afterwards, however, I'll pull each and every card up to talk about how it relates to you for the month ahead. Your catalyst message this month revolves around love, and the message is not about new love coming in or who you should love, it's about simply being in that state, or I sometimes say the frequency of love. If you look closely at the illustration, you'll see this child holding a book, and I think this can be symbolic of loving what you do, loving who you are, and also kind of creating your own version of, of authentic version of yourself and giving it to the world. Too often we worry about trying to prove our love to others, to prove ourselves worthy of other people's affection or approval, when in fact we should be feeling that uh, it's the other way around, that we offer something that they should also be grateful for. It's a give and take, it's a two-way street. And what I like about this book here that he's holding is, it shows that you can create your own story, your own narrative, and that independence, that strength of character, that conviction, just like that keystone message we were talking about, this is what's gonna make you bold and stand out from the crowd. Additionally, when you feel strong, other people resonate behind that strength and support you. So this means that if there's something that you need to do in your life to be happier, whether it's leaving a job, whether it's leaving a marriage, whether it's stating something that's important, like you want to um, create something in your life or coming out or something like this, whatever the change, the announcement or the shift is, you'll have the support of others once you believe in it yourself, once you're authentic to your own story. And uh, that's the most important thing, I think that I'm pu pulling from that message there. Let's look at your center card now. Uh, right at the center, we have the Five of Pentacles. There are three messages that come through with this. The first is that if you're feeling limits or feeling a, a fear of abundance when it comes to resources, this could be your time, your energy, or your money, I don't think that this is going to be something that is going to stick around. When I look in the ego, I have the nine of pentacles, which is the antithesis of the five. This is independence, this is self-sustaining, this is abundance, growth, etc. Everything that you really want and need, you embody. But at the center, we have a little bit of fear with the five of pentacles. Now, for me, whenever this comes through, it usually harkens back to something in the past, particularly how you felt with either a parent or a very key sort of mentor when you were growing up. And sometimes what happens is we have a moment in time where we were very vulnerable and someone comes in and they say something and it kind of creates this little crack in our self-confidence. This card is kind of encouraging you to go back to that moment and put some spackle in there and realize that was one person, one moment in time, and it shouldn't hold you back or define everything that you're about to become. The third message that we see with the uh, Five of Pentacles is to take care of your health. Sometimes this just shows that because you're so worried about other people about trying to understand things because you're a very curious sign, you like to learn and absorb knowledge, that you might have just gotten sort of too wrapped up in the schedule and, and, and sort of not taken proper care of your nutrition, your sleep, and your overall health. That's where the keystone message also comes in with structure, organization, and taking care of yourself. Get that back in the schedule. Start to work out, start to eat better, and start to make that a priority in your life. Crossing the Five of Pentacles, we have a very supportive card in the way of the Four of Wands. This is foundational. When it comes to a new project, this shows that there's a really good team together. If it's a relationship, this shows that the person that you're 
uh, starting to befriend or maybe you're dating, this person is in it for the long haul. At the very least, they see you as a friend and an ally. So this is a really good time to network, to make new friends, to heal old relationships as well. You have a really good skill this month for making things improve. And notice that the Four of Wands card is actually going over top of this mentor or family member or parent card that uh, might have in the past indicated someone who hurt you. So whether it is an internal healing or maybe even a face-to-face -face healing, you have a chance to let go of that and to uh, build a better foundation for the future. And that's what it's all about. As we look at the deep past, it looks like many of you have already been doing a lot of work with networking and it's paying off from what I can see in the center. So the 10 of cups shows that some of you may have, you know, started a new relationship. You might've worked on an existing one. You might've engaged in a partnership because we have the four of wands for business. Uh, so whatever the case there, the work seems to be well invested. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as we look at the rest of the cards. But um, what I wanna focus on now is the tower. The tower came through in recent past. And this is not a sort of scary tower because you have two very good cards in the crowning and near future. So I wanna set them up here. You have the tower upright, you have the star reversed, and then you have the fool card. This, if I've ever seen it, is a breakthrough sort of trifecta here, or I should say triptych. <laughs> um, and so we'll start uh, chronologically with each one and I'll talk about how this is gonna create a shift for you. Let's go ahead and begin with the tower. Because it's in the recent past, the message here is that change is already underway. It's more subtle than you imagined though. And one of the challenges for you is to get some perspective this month and appreciate how much you've done and how much you're already doing to get your sort of goals and dreams completed. I talked about that way back at the beginning when I said why June is an important month. The message here is you're, you're doing great and you're making more change, possibly even just internally, than you noticed or realized. And now, the, the, what's interesting about the tower is when change finally does sort of noticeably happen, it happens with such a swift motion that you might have to catch your breath and that you're surprised. So that change could happen now or in the next quarter year. So I would say within the next three months, your life is gonna take a big change. How quickly, how far, and to what degree you allow this change to happen, that's your free will. But let's look at your keystone card, your crowning position, and the star in reverse is sort of your, basically your skeleton key that's gonna help you figure out how to do it. The star card is about being 100% integrated, trusting yourself, stepping up to the plate, being very visible, and embracing opportunity. This is where you are both in the right place at the right time, and you're also prepared and ready on all levels of mind, body, and spirit for this sort of shift to happen. The reversal of the star means that there's a little bit of work to do. When we go to that center card, the five of pentacles, confidence is the first thing that I see. For some of you, it could be time or money, but that can be shifted by sort of your management skills this month. So if you take the next card up in the suit of pentacles, it's the six of pentacles, which has a person with scales and the message of the six of pentacles is you have enough if you manage better. So if we were to step you up one in the suit, you are very close to that and you have the support here of others. So you can actually use some of your other resources, friends, family, coworkers, and allow them to get you to that six of pentacles. I think that some of you, because you're highly empathic and you put yourself in other people's shoes, have a hard time maybe delegating or asking for that help. Just know that it's here and that this is the solution. It's literally right on top of this card. So if you feel like you don't have enough, ask for help. There's help around you and you can then create a change in your resources with that. In fact, when I look at deep past, you have a lot of love in your life. People appreciate who you are and what you do. So you can change this and you can start to step forward and then also kind of demand the respect that you also earned and deserve. Um, for some of you, this could also be changing the dynamics in a work situation and putting your uh, hat in the ring for a promotion, being considered for something bigger. 
moving up, moving out, moving on. That's the tower. That's also the fool, which we'll talk about in a second. The other thing with the star is um, you can't sort of blend into the scenery anymore. This is not a wallflower card. So you will want to make sure that you, if something comes forward for you, if there's, again, a promotion opportunity, some sort of public appearance, or if people ask for you to do something, and it means that you're going to be accountable, visible, and right there in the spotlight, this is one of those windows of opportunity that only comes along once in a blue moon. So take it. It feels like it's good. It will create change, but it feels like you've been working hard for this change, so embrace it. We have the Fool card in the near future. These two cards, especially when we're looking at past and future, this reads to me as moving on, moving up, or moving out. So if you've been living a long time in the same place, you're going to have an opportunity perhaps to move physically. If you've been in the same company for a while, you're either going to, by choice or by the universe, be kind of pushed into something else. This could mean restructuring. This could mean layoffs. This could also mean that you have just kind of decided that it's time to move on. Something in your life has to shift, and it's probably one of these concrete things. Where you live, where you work, who you're living with, or maybe moving in with someone. So there's big, big changes. They're starting now, and they're going to continue th through this next quarter of the year. I like what I see in the ego. We talked about this a moment ago. It's the Nine of Pentacles. Some of you might actually be sitting on something that you haven't yet monetized. We see the figure here holding the book. This can be symbolic of an idea, maybe that you're going to patent, um, literally like a book or a product that you're going to bring out to the public. This could also be something where you've invested a lot in yourself. Maybe you've gone to school or college, and now you're going to be able to uh, cash in on that work that you did on yourself, that personal development. Because the Nine of Pentacles shows me that we see it in the ego, so I see the potential for you to be independent, self-sufficient, and um, able to take care of yourself. You also have a lot to offer other people. It's interesting that this sort of Nine of Pentacles is like an assembly line type card. So I think that there's something that you have that a lot of people are going to be interested in or that it's very marketable or that, uh, again, at the very least, I just see a lot of abundance and a lot of resources. So trust yourself, trust your skills, put yourself out there, negotiate, um, and take a risk. That's what's coming through in the near future here, the full card. And this can indicate the midpoint of the month or again, two to three months out. So in that near future, I see the movement, I see the change. It's happening now, but you're gonna really feel it in the next couple of months. And you're gonna be pushed into a position where you're gonna have to step into that change or that accountability or that visibility. For some of you, this is off-putting or scary, but there's a lot of freedom that comes with the Fool card, and there's a rainbow in this Fool card, so I think you should go for it. All right, let's look at what's causing stress right now. In the environment, we have the Nine of Swords. Maybe you're having a hard time sleeping. Maybe you're worrying about things like money, because that came through right at the center. Or the critical words that maybe came from other people are weighing on you. And what I want you to try to do this month is let it go. Um, just start to... Take a deep breath, ground yourself, and focus on whatever this is symbolizing for you. What is it that you really want to do with your life? That's like your, your, your book of life, basically, and what you're creating. You are the author of that. Don't let other people, parents, friends, society, dictate who you should become. If you were to kind of see your life as something where you were the main character, how would you want it to end? What kind of love story would you want? What kind of friends would you write in there? This is actually how manifesting works. You can visualize these sorts of things and actually call them into your life because you then put yourself in that energy where you realize, you know what, I'm actually ready for that. And this can happen and I feel it happening. And I am, like the writer, in control of my life and the trajectory that I'm taking. In hopes, fears, and opportunity, we have the Page of Wands. Pages are about both delivering and also receiving information or ideas in this particular card. And so if you've been stuck or if you've been afraid of something happening or not happening, it feels like that fear or that uncertainty will be allayed or assuaged by the fact that some sort of development will come through that's going to allow you to take a deep breath. This isn't money. This is more an idea. So the idea is either going to be something that you realize the potential in, and then you can see sort of like, oh yeah, this is, 
this is opportunity and maybe you create a group to kind of invest in that or you have, as I said earlier, sort of created something that others are interested in and you're going to have to go out there and share it because pages, um, they're on their way to being nights. But so this month, what you would do is you would prepare. You would get your proposal ready, your inquiry letter, your CV, your resume, whatever it is that you're going to put out there to the world or the universe to um, basically get people interested in it. This could also indicate for some of you that you're going to set up a website, an application, or some sort of delivery vehicle for this. The idea is there. The preparation work is being done. The keystone tells me that this is the final piece. So whatever it is you're trying to create in your life, finish it this month. This is, the, this is kind of the step before we see the, uh, that sort of arch happening for you between the tower, the star, and the fool. Now, if you're kind of feeling like, well, you know, I'm not really an entrepreneur and I'm happy at work. Well, what this is showing for you is that there could be other changes in your life. It could be a change in uh, relationship status, someone new coming in, or you could be sort of finding a new group of people or some activities in your life that make you feel sort of um, emboldened and excited because we have the fool card. Uh, this is a great time for travel. Uh, maybe you're deciding to do some home renovations or you've decided now I want to take a turn in my life and do something that matters more. The star card also can indicate looking at things from a different perspective. The star is way up there and it's kind of looking at things um, not just from the ego perspective, but it's sort of the it's another analogy to the world, which is how are we all connected? How can I make a difference there? The outcome card is reminding you to take care of physical well-being this month. We have the strength card in reverse. You got a lot going on. I can see it. Um, some of you might be fatigued because we have this Nine of Swords card, which means problems with sleep, um, irritability, perhaps because you're not getting the rest that you need. Maybe you're burning the candle at both ends. So make sure that you're getting the required nutrition, sleep, and rest this month. And the other piece of the Strength card is um, to make sure, just like the Star card, that you take the reins. We have two of the most powerful cards in reverse. And so I see the potential of visibility and celebrity and being known. And I also see the ability for you to be independent, um, as we saw here, being self-sufficient. But there's something holding you back. Whatever happened in the past, it is the past. Um, if you were initially rejected by a person, by a job, or by an opportunity, this month, this year, things are different. And you need to start to um, integrate that understanding within your body, within your energy. And this will affect the change externally. When people know that you know that things are different, then they're going to see you as evolved and they're going to react differently to whatever it is you're trying to create. It's a new story. It's a new ending. You get, to, you get a second chance at something. Even though we didn't get the Eight of Cups, you don't always need that for a second chance. You're making it. And that's what these two things are showing. You're basically kind of like weeding things out or knocking, knocking down walls and making new structures. And what an exciting month ahead for you. Sometimes I love to see the tower, particularly if it's in the past, because it's showing me that you've done the work, that change has happened. And that's exactly what's happening for you this month. But you have to believe in yourself and you have to let go of the fears to really um, embrace the other positive cards, which we see with the star, the fool and strength. Those are great. So I can't wait really to look at Health, Wealth, Love and Destiny so that we can further set you up for success over this month. As always, let's begin with health. This includes mind, body and spirit. There is a simple but powerful message for health this month. We have the instinct card. And really what the instinct card is telling you is that you have a chance this month to maybe like nip something in the bud. There could be uh, either something in a physical sense is coming through like a pain receptor or clairvoyant. You might see something that you can avoid or you just have something in the pit of your stomach where you know, I need to do this or I don't need to do this or I should go to the doctor and get this checked out. I want you to honor that uh, sort of internal compass that you have in your own body that's telling you if you're on the right or wrong path. 
And this is really important if you're in a social gathering and someone is trying to make you try something new, whether it's food or it's some sort of toxic substance or um, they're trying to coerce you into trying a new diet or some new fad. I really want you to trust yourself, know your limits. And even if you're in something like, um, like an exercise class and the instructor's pushing you a little too hard, you want to make sure that you don't strain a muscle or end up hurting yourself. So this month is about moderation, it's about listening to your body, and if something doesn't feel right, always honor that. Get it checked out, say no, again, if it's a class environment, or if it's a social environment and you just know that the next day you're gonna feel like just horribly if you drink something or eat something that you shouldn't, then don't do it. Listen to yourself this month. That's going to be the most powerful message. I see the strength card in reverse here, um, again, with the Nine of Swords. So. If you're having severe problems with sleep or anxiety, obviously talk to a doctor about that. And the strength card reverse can also be a subtle hint from the universe that some sort of physical activity and strength training uh, could be advantageous. Again, honoring the limits of your body. One thing that seems universally good this month is a low impact activity like walking. Not only is this going to help you um, sort of get some positive endorphins flowing through your body, but it changes the energy uh, because you're going to be going into different environments. When you get out of one place, then all of a sudden your thought process, your auric field, and again, even just the blood in your body, it's all starting to move. And this allows you to start to see things and feel things from a different perspective. Let's go ahead now and take a look at wealth, knowing that wealth isn't just money, it's how you feel internally. We talked about the Five of Pentacles to that respect earlier. It's also how you embrace the opportunities coming into your life. In the wealth area, we have a great card here, the union card in reverse, which is showing that for many of you, there could be an unexpected partnership. As I said earlier, this is a great month for meeting new people. We have the four of wands, in fact, crossing the center. So that shows that there's a great possibility that you could connect with someone that truly has the same vision, or at the very least, wants to support you in a way that is gonna be important for your success this month. Um, to get a little bit of an idea of who they might be, we do have a page of wands, which could show uh, for some of you that you might end up being a mentor. This could be a mentee stepping in because this is usually slightly younger, unless you are um, perhaps high school or college age, and then that would be a peer for you. But for the rest of you, there could be a younger fire sign coming in. They do need a little oversight. Um, so I like this partnership, but you will be probably someone who's going to lend support from what I can tell here. Um, the other thing that's coming through for the, uh, for the whole union message is that you want to make sure that you're not entering into it assuming that there might be problems. Because when I looked at the environment before, we have that stress card. And I don't know about you, but whenever, uh, whenever I've had a boss, a new boss come in or I started a new job somewhere, it's always refreshing to have someone that trusts that you can handle what they've um, kind of pulled you in for. So they just assume that you're competent until proven otherwise. I think that's a great way to, um, to start a new relationship, especially a business one. So what you could do this month, because there, there is a need to have oversight, is simply to lay out all of your expectations and say, here's what I need to, um, to get this done. And this is what I expect as far as communication, as far as your responsibility, and uh, if we do this, then we're going to get along fabulously. And then let them go and trust that they're going to do it and say something like, I'm really happy to have you on the team. Always show that, they're, that you trust that they were a good choice. And then that's a nice motivator. It's better to feel like your boss expects a lot and thinks that you're great rather than um, they think you're bad and you're always trying to prove yourself. So that's one lesson maybe that you can impart you know, and, and sort of create in your life, even if nobody else has done that for you before. Let's go ahead and move along and take a look at love. Love isn't simply your romantic relationships, it's also how you treat others and how you wanna be treated in return. I mentioned that this was a pivotal change month here. We have P 
peaks of joy coming through for love. Um, the card was reversed, which is showing me that just like if we saw the Nine of Cups, which is kind of like this, um, a very exaggerated or accelerated version of that feeling of love or joy, um, there could be punctuated highs, punctuated lows this month, as illustrated by the Tower card. And for some of you, when it comes to a core relationship, um, you might look at this and think, this could be feeling too intense. You might need to pull back a little bit. Some of you might be in the middle of a breakup because for me, the tower and the fool, even if it is a soulmate like the star, it can sometimes be a little bit unmanageable. So one thing that you'll want to do this month is kind of take a look at how you're feeling and is this something that's sustainable or is it too much up and down? Are you looking for someone that you can depend on a little bit more? Um, if so, that's fine. The other thing here is basically a message of the reverse of this, which would be like temperance or moderation. So if you could find a way this month to, yes, celebrate the highs, and yes, when something's not going well, be critical and think like, how can I change it? But don't get stuck in the high or the low. Try to pull yourself back even a little bit so that uh, everything is more manageable and you can take advantage of a lot of the resources and opportunities that seem to want to come through this month. So basically both in your health and also in your um, relationships, I would say moderation is really, really key. Let's go ahead now and move along to your destiny card. Destiny is a great way for you to look at your overall trajectory. And if it feels good, this card will help you stay on path. If there's a message for improvement, it'll come through here as well. And hopefully that will get you back on a trajectory that feels better for you. We have a really powerful card here in your destiny position. This God represents um, divine masculine energy. And as it says here in the smallest text here, it says, express your driving passion, your sensual and sexual powers are increased, and it's all about life force. You could summarize this, at least in relation to the spread, as your passion in life. Something about your passion, maybe up until this point, has been pulled back or muted a bit. The way to really achieve your power is to work that passion. And um, if you can do that, this is kind of the secret to any job. It doesn't feel like work if you love it. You don't mind if you're working six or seven days a week if it's something that you love. A lot of writers feel this way. A lot of artists feel this way. So if there's a way that you can integrate that into your day-to-day -day work, that's great. It's not always viable for everyone. So what you really want to be looking at also is what are you doing with your life overall? There has to be some sort of a connection between uh, what you love and what you're doing on the planet. If it's not your day job, your overall uh, sort of contribution to the world. Something has to come into focus so that there is passion and joy and something that gets you up in the morning. That's what that was really communicating to you. This month, I really want you to honor your instinct, which is in that sort of realm of sensuality, sexuality, desire, and pull it into a higher space and think, okay, I love this. It, it fuels me. I'm going to make this part of my daily practice, part of my job, part of something that I give back to the world. This is how you can maximize a lot of your power cards, which were reversed. The star was reversed. The strength card was reversed and the passion card was reversed in divine masculine. You've got to pull those um, into the upright position. Be authentic. Don't be afraid to call the shots. And that's also an extension of this, which is don't be afraid to do what you love. When you do that, then you're powerful. And these cards, which were upright, are not going to feel like they're destabilizing. In fact, you can ride the wave. The tower can almost be like a, a surfer riding the wave. I want you to be more like that than trying to sort of like recover from an earthquake, which is what we normally would associate with the energy of the tower. It can be something that gives momentum rather than something that's destructive, but you have to own the power of the creation and destruction. And then that allows you to be this final card here. All right, let's go ahead now and review everything that we talked about. And then I'll leave you with a closing message at the end. As we talked about in your channeled information this month, you have a chance to be a keystone either for yourself or for a larger group. This is a pivotal centerpiece that kind of holds things together. It also indicates 
that if you're working on something, we saw it here, you could actually be bringing uh, a big dream or aspiration into its final stages of development this month. Keep up with the structure of your day-to-day -day life, your um, habits, your meditation, and just be consistent each and every day on working towards the completion or the eventuality of what's coming through here. In the catalyst position, we have to simply be in that state of love. We got an uh, elevated version of this at the end, which was to really allow passion to uh, kind of go through everything that you're doing. Definitely sort of what your final contribution is to the planet. You should be enjoying or feeling it on some level. There was a central theme at the middle here of trying to overcome any feeling of doubt, inadequacy, or fear, knowing that there's a lot of support with friends, family, and coworkers this month. You should utilize that. In fact, it feels like a lot of you have been working hard at creating some really important relationships. You might even have found love in your life as well, which is great. That'll be there as you go through the changes in front of you here. Um, and we have a really interesting arc here, the tower, the star, the fool some changes already underway, some opportunities presenting themselves, but the question here is, are you ready to receive them? And then for some of you, you may choose uh, that it's just like too much and you walk away, or you might ride that wave, and then this can indicate freedom, risk, opportunity, and this feeling of liberation. The resources that were once finite seem to open up here as we look at your ego. Some of this could be potential energy that you have to either bring out to the world in the way of, you know, a pitch, a proposal, or offering a resume or something. There needs to be a delivery or a expression of this potential energy for some of you. Um, when we're looking in the environment, there's fear, but it feels unsubstantiated because the card is reversed. You might need someone to talk to so that you can alleviate that. If so, feel free to do that. Um, take care of your overall body and physical strength. The card at the end is reminding you that without that, all that we see here can't really be maximized and realized. So you've got to be strong mind, body, and spirit. Follow your instincts when it comes to limits and capacity this month, particularly with your health. With wealth, um, power in numbers, basically. And we see here, not necessarily even just two, but it could be a small group, three, four, ten, your ability to connect with others is going to be powerful. Uh, make sure that you try to temper any feelings of joy, anxiety, or depression this month. There could be ex exaggerated highs and lows, and with respect to your relationships, this is the one area where stress may kind of come through and the Nine of Swords is tangible. So just try to take a deep breath and uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Uh, when it comes to the passion or the energy that you should be focusing on, it's what makes you happy, what you really want to do on this planet. And to that end, sometimes what I will do with a client is I challenge them to get a small piece of paper like this, an index card, and write on it in a few words what it is that they hope to do to kind of leave an indelible impact on this planet, a thumbprint on the planet. Um, hopefully that also coincides with what it is that they love. So think about what brings you joy. Write that on one index card. Think about how you would like to leave a legacy or make an impact on the world and put that on another. You'll be surprised at how powerful it is to distill these things into something small. I'm gonna give you a hypothetical example. For some of you that maybe want to heal the planet, you enjoy environmental endeavors. Um, that could be something that you love. You could actually love um, sort of like conserving things, protecting things, um, recycling, basically mending the earth in different ways. So your purpose would be sustainability and um, healing the environment. The method by which you could do this is um, advocacy, changing public policy, and possibly creating some sort of a new technology if you're entrepreneurial or maybe sort of an engineer that could make it cheap and also um, appealing for corporations to be sustainable. So there you go. It, once you put it down on note cards, you can find ways to make it work so that not only are you enjoying what you do and making a difference in the world, but you could also make it something that sustains you and the planet. So play around with this. Put your passion on one card. Put what you want to do for the world before you leave. When you're out in the etheric realm looking back thinking, did I make a difference? What is that difference? It can be something like starting a family and, you know, 
you know, creating some sort of a sense of cohesiveness that you didn't have before. It can be like that. It can also be big and planetary, like I just said. It doesn't matter, but whatever it is that you want to do, know that and then start to create the threads that allow you to um, manifest it. And this can be really exciting for you. And I look forward to hearing from some of you about what your goal is. You can even put it in the comments below. That would be really inspirational. So that brings our monthly reading to a close, but I hope that you got what you needed. I think at the end, you definitely got some instructional information that can help you make the change and ride the wave of the tower rather than having the tower kind of sort of like come down on you. And that's something that I think people give the tower a bad rap. You basically just have this energy of transformation that wants to come through this month. If you would like to talk a little bit more about a change that you want to make in your life or some questions that you have, feel free to reach out to me. If you look at the first card in the video and the first link below it, that'll take you to a page on my site where you can look at rates and availability. And if you're interested and want to schedule an appointment with me, I'd love to chat with you. If you like what you saw here and you would simply like to support the channel, consider becoming a patron. All this really means is that you can do a small contribution, something like $1, and this can help me for the course of the year buy supplies and set up, more importantly, the time that it takes to do these videos. Each one is about one day in production time, and that takes me about 12 days a month. And through the contributions of fans and viewers like you, I'm able to carve out that time from my one-on-one -on -one appointments. And I have more time, more energy, and more quality to produce the videos when you guys support me. So clicking the second card and second link will take you to a page on my website that will um, kind of outline all the different ways you can become a patron. Anybody who's done it previously, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much. I dedicate this video to you, and if you'd like to make the next round possible, then click that link, and i just like to say thank you in advance. The third and final way that you can show support is simply by liking and subscribing, and then joining me on social media. Uh, I'm going to put some information here at the bottom of the screen, and then also you can click the third card or the third link. This will take you to my website, and you can join me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, as well as my newsletter. After doing that, if you wanna go one step further, you can share it on your social media feed. And this has an amazing impact on not only the health of this channel, but more importantly for me to be able to help others. And that's my purpose here. That's why I'm really showing up. Let's move along now to your closing message. And it's all about this breakthrough opportunity, again, that's happening. The tower, the star, and the fool followed up by this divine masculine card here that's showing that you can work or create something that you're passionate about on this planet. I think that when we're children, parents should allow us for a chance to just go after something that, again, brings us passion and allows us to make a mark on the world that matters. This is your opportunity this month. Take my homework assignment, get those two notebook cards um, or three by five cards and write something down that matters to you, um, that you love doing, and then something that you want to look back on your life and feel like, yeah, that was important. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I left the world by doing this and it's a better place because of it. That's what's important. It's not what you're wearing. It's not what your last name is. It's not where you live. Um, these are the things that you actually take with you when you leave. Love and a feeling of accomplishment that will go with you into the etheric realm. So start to think about the eternal sort of currency, which is like love and satisfaction. And um, that's the important thing for this month, okay? Wishing you love, light, and happiness and the ability to really create this passionate change that's happening. I hope that all of you can realize the energy of the star this month, okay? Take care of yourselves and I'll see you again in one month's time. Thank you so much for being you and for allowing me to show up here for you.